Hi, this screencast is to help you understand how to determine the number of significant figures or sig figs in a number. So if I give you any number, you should be able to look at the digits and decide if they count towards the accuracy of the um, measurement or if they're, they do not count um, towards the accuracy. So in other words, if they're significant or not. Why do we need sig figs? Well, you can only report as many digits on your calculator or in your math answer as your least accurate measuring tool. So if you're looking at this balance over here, you can see that it'll read to the hundredths place, the tens place, the ones place, and then you are asked to read as many lines, so in this case the tenths place, and then you estimate. So this answer, I would read this as 270 two point looks like five and then I'm going to estimate one more and it I would go with a one so in this balance this triple beam balance I can estimate that there are five sig figs so when you're doing math though and you take your 272.51 and you multiply it by another number or divide by another number the calculator gives you a whole screen full of numbers so you need to know where to round off that number to accurately reflect how um, well you were able to measure your your answer and therefore what to report so because if we took this 3.23446913636 it's on the calculator and we needed to report it to five digits we'd need to know where to report so or um, I'm sorry where to round so we would take 3.234 and we need one more so it's a four also but beside it is a six so we would round that to a five so that number rounded to five sig figs is 3.2345. When determining sig figs, one through nine always count, and zeros is when you have to start thinking. So here's some rule of th rules of thumb, and we're gonna use um, the oceans across the United States. We're gonna use the Atlantic and the Pacific. So on this screen, you see this, the question at the top says, is the decimal absent? Then count from the Atlantic side. So if our number was 0 0.3420, it's um, is a decimal absent. So this one doesn't count. But if we had 320, we would be able to use this rule. So we're going to go to the Atlantic side of the, the um, number, which is over here, and we're going to go to the first non-zero number, so up to here to between the zero and two, and we're going to count the digits across the rest of the country. So we started on the Atlantic, and we're going to be moving toward the Pacific, so we would count the two and the three. So this number, 320, would have two sig figs. Now in this case, if the decimal is present, then we count from the Pacific side of the number and we're going to go to the Pacific side of the first non-zero number and count the digits across the rest of the country. So we would start on the Pacific side of the decimal. So three, two, four, zero, they all count because they're on, um, we found the decimal and we then count all the digits across the country. So we have four, sig figs in that number. The key here is deciding whether the decimal is present or absent and knowing which side to start counting on. Here are some examples. So if we start up here with 0 0.0370, we ask ourselves, is the decimal absent or present? And it is present. So we're going to go to the Pacific side of the number and we're going to start at the first non-zero. So we have three, seven, zero. So this answer has three sig figs. If we come over here to 30.9, is the decimal present? Yes. So we're going again to the Pacific side of the number and starting with the first non-zero. So the three is the first non-zero, the zero and the nine. So again, that one has three sig figs. If we go up here to the 0 0.0090460, is the decimal present? Yes. So we're going to start on the Pacific side and we're going to start at the first non-zero. So we have a zero, we have a zero, a zero, none of those count. We start counting at the nine, zero, four, six, zero. So this has five sig figs. Here again, 503.00. The decimal is present. 
we're starting on the Pacific side at the first non-zero. So how many sig figs does 503.00 have? If you said five, you are correct. All right, down here at 40.0 is a decimal present. Yes. So we are going to count the four, the zero, and this last zero, and that would give us three sig figs. Last example on our map here. We have 12,000 is the decimal present. No, there is an understood decimal, so we're going to start on the Atlantic side. So we're going to go across the number and look for the first non-zero. So we have these three zeros, and we have a two and a one. So there are two sig figs in this number. When you don't have a decimal, it doesn't matter how many zeros you have, they are not going to be significant. Okay, lastly, here are the rules when you do math and then you want to determine how many sig figs to have. Um, so there's two rules. There is adding or subtracting. The answer can have the same number of decimals as the least decimals. So if you're adding 3.8 and 2.25, your answer can only have one decimal. And if you're multiplying that 3.8 times your 2.25, your answer can only have the same as the least number of sig figs. So our answer would only have two sig figs. And the rule of thumb is report the answer with the smallest number of sig figs. You always want to lean towards the least numbers present. So I hope this tutorial helped you out. Remember, if you use the oceans to determine the number of sig figs, all you have to do is ask yourself, is the decimal absent or is it present to know which side to start on and then count any digit after your first non-zero.